right, Chef Miller, J.D. Pendleton, we're back in the kitchen because we're still making freezer meals for the freezer, okay? So we're doing this in the 30-day meal plan, which is a lot of cooking. It takes me two and a half to three days to do this. It probably wouldn't take me that long. Uh, we got some bad news that John's brother passed away about five o'clock in the morning, yesterday morning. So I didn't get to making the food until that evening. So we were up till five o'clock in the morning. John ended up helping me uh, wash some dishes at the very end because I wasn't going to get it done. I need to get to bed. So we, had, we got the spaghetti and meatballs. We got the four entrees of that made. We got the four entrees of the uh, penne regatta, con ricotta, alfredo made. Long, long work. But that's what it is. And then we got the, um, the chicken uh, alfredo penne made as well. So today I'm making my taco casserole, which takes the ground beef, and I'm making a beefy cheesy mac, which also takes ground beef. So when you do this, you want to make sure that you're making up enough for, uh, for all your entrees that call for ground beef, or call, um, for the uh, stew meat. Uh, you want to make sure you get enough for the number of recipes that you're going to be doing. This is enough for just the one recipe of beef stew that we're going to be making. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to brown the ground beef. I'm going to put that into another bowl, and then I'm going to go right in that same pan with a little bit of really hot, you know, hot pan, cold oil. Let the oil heat up, and then we're going to sear the stew meat really well because we want to almost caramelize and seal that flavor into the stew meat. Okay, so you treat it a little bit different than you do hamburger. So we're going to do that next. So beef stew, taco casserole, and cheesy ma and, and hamburger mac and cheese. Those are the three we're doing next. And then we're going to work on the crock pot mills. And we'll be right back. You want to pre-chop all your vegetables, your celery, your onions, your carrots, anything that you need to be chopped, peppers, chop it all up in advance. And I just get like a big container of it, shake it up, mix it really well, and then just throw what I need into a pan. All right, I'm going to make me a cup of tea. I'm going to get serious here. We just got back. I had to put uh, new brakes on my car. New tires two weeks ago, and this week, new brakes. So I'm at almost two grand. We're at almost $2,000 between tires and brakes and everything. So, because I had to get a new caliper to so put on my, uh, my SUV. Just a little bit of oil. Even for my hamburger, I put in just a little bit of oil. I did have that still a little bit too hot. If you have any left over, just make it into some uh, hamburger patties. Add just a little bit more olive oil to this, just a little drizzle, not much. A couple of cloves of garlic, a half of a red onion, and some of these red, yellow, and orange sweet peppers are fine. And add a little bit of salt, not a lot. Because uh, one of my recipes, uh, may call for chicken broth or beef broth and that might have some salt in it so you don't want to over salt it just yet you want to layer your flavors we're going to put in about uh, four or five really small cloves of garlic if they're big cloves i'd say two or three oops so you can see mine are small. Turn to aim it down so you don't splatter juice all over yourself. I'm just going to add the peppers. Okay, we're going to let this finish cooking. We've got our salt and pepper in here. Any other uh, spices or herbs that you want in here, now's your time to add it. Um, peppers, any kind of peppers work. If you want to put a dash of hot pepper in here, you can. This is just crushed red pepper, just a little bit, and I even like just a little bit of celery salt, just a little bit of celery salt. You can even put in a little bit of cayenne pepper or um, chili powder in here if you'd like to, if you want more of a chili flavor. It's not quite done yet, but when it is, we're going to drain the fluids off of this, and then we're going to add some of my gluten-free McCormick's taco. A seasoning mix. See, mine's gluten free. And I'm only going to add about a quarter of a package. Okay, I just drain this and put a can of black beans in here. 
Now I'm going to take my uh, gluten-free uh, taco mix, and I'm only going to put on about a quarter of a package because again, I'm not, I don't want that much on mine. I'm going to put in a little less than a quarter cup of water, just a little bit. Okay, and you can make a big vat of this. I mean, you could make five pounds of this up and put it in a freezer bag, label it, and put it in the um, put it in the freezer just like this right here after it cools. Uh, down enough to do so and just put it in freezer Ziploc baggies and the reason you could do this and just leave it just like this right here is it would be ready for tacos it'd be taco kit ready right here all you'd need is a little bit of sour cream and some cheddar cheese and you'd have a taco a little guacamole or whatever it is you like okay so again at this stage right here cool it off put it in freezer baggies and and fill it up with enough in the right size freezer baggies so that you could feed your size of family. And then fill up some soft tacos or some uh, burrito shells, you know, whatever, corn tortillas, whatever you're, even if you make them fresh, you'd at least have the meat. You'd have all this part done. Less dishwashing, less headache. I mean, this would save you 20 minutes right here, 25 minutes off your kitchen um, baking time for a busy night, okay? So see, you can still have taco night and not spend all the time on it. And you can use this meat sauce in a lot of other things as well. We have feta cheese. We have um, our alfresco cheese. We're getting ready to crumble up that. We have our fiesta blend cheese here. We have our soft tortillas. And these just fit right in here like this. These are just a flour tortilla. We got this size so they would fit in here perfectly. And then my homemade chili sauce. You can go right here, up over here, and I'll give you that recipe for my homemade chili sauce. Or your favorite chili sauce will work. See, doesn't that look delicious right there? And we're going to start out by spraying the pan. I'll just do one of these so you can see it better. We're going to spray the pan so nothing sticks. We're going to put in one flour tortilla. These are nice and fresh. I just picked them up from the store. We're going to put down a layer of our chili sauce. Ooh, this looks so good. Mmm, that looks so good. Oh, it's like a sweet chili sauce. It is so delicious. Let me kind of blend that up just a little bit. There we go. Try to get to the edges. And then we're just going to put in a layer of our meat. Remember, one of these is going to feed two people. I don't eat that much. So John will eat about this much, and then I'll eat a little bit area right here. So there we go. I'm just going to keep layering this all the way to the edges. Okay, and then we're going to kind of press it in just a little bit here. My hand. Put in a little bit of the crumbled, um, you can see this, the crumbled um, alfresco cheeses. This is almost, it almost has a mozzarella flair to it, maybe not quite as salty. Cross between farmer's cheese or ricotta cheese and mozzarella, I would say. All right, a little bit of feta cheese, which I think has a nice, nice, um, Nice sharp, nice, mm, nice sharp smell to it. It almost has a blue cheesy smell to it almost. And then our taco blend. Now, while you got this layer of cheese on here, now's a really good chance to pat it without getting, you know, soupy stuff all over you because you want this nice and compacted. We like our olives, so this might take me a minute. Remember, you're going to be making several of these. Okay. Now, we're going to do this again. I'm going to put on another layer. That one wasn't very big. I'll put it on the bottom of this next one. There we go. I guess the pan flares open a little bit. Okay. So push sauce. Try to 
to get the sauce all the way to the edge so when you bake this, the edges aren't uh, go, don't get hard. Now this is a little bit of a sweeter sauce, so you don't want to put on too much. On the meat. Okay. I'm going to go the opposite on this now. I'm going to put on shredded cheese next. cheese all the way to the edge. All right, now we're going to crumble some of the alfresco back on here. Some of the feta. Now I'm going to put this in the freezer and I'm going to freeze this. I'm going to label it, date it, and freeze this. It's good in the freezer for about four months, but this is our one month meal plan. So we're going to, um, we're going to have it eaten up before then, hopefully. Chop up some olives here on top. The black beans are already in it, but if you want to save some black beans out for decorating the top instead of the black olives, you can certainly do that. If you like green olives better than black olives, you can do that as well. Make this recipe your recipe and put however many spices and things in it that you like, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do here now is these came with a lid. We're just gonna put these down just like this. We're gonna bend down our edges all the way around. Um, there we go, and we're going to write on the top that this is, um, we'll just call this beefy uh, taco pie. There you go, and it was made on 11, 18, 15. All right, and then I'll have my husband, I'll go ahead and finish pushing this down. And when you bake this, I guess I should write on here about when you bake it. Uh, directions. Bake at 350 degrees. I should put on here thaw first. Thaw one hour. Uh, one hour and then um, bake at 350 degrees for um, I believe it's going to probably take about 25 to 35 minutes. In case I give one of these away. There. There you go. Make sure you got all this pinned down really well. Um, this basically serves three people. Okay? One of this size serves about three people. So you can get larger um, tins and you can. Uh, my husband and I, we really like this, so this will probably not have any leftovers for us. But if you got. A couple of small little ones in the house you can probably stretch this to three or four okay for that size and I mean this is a good couple pounds right now I feel like it's about about almost two pounds in, in weight so, so anyway leave me a comment below let me know what your favorite freezer meal is that you put up into the freezer what your kids like or if you want to leave a recipe below for us all to share in for how you do it boy we would love to hear from you on that and maybe I'll even make a video of it and even give it a try and give you credit. That would be fun. We love you. Be sure to hit the subscribe button because there's more where this is coming from. Blessings.